Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. This is a last minute video of me just going, I don't, I don't know what to do. Last minute casual video. This is gonna be kind of vlog style. There's gonna be a lot of talking. If you were just here to see some things get thrown into a pot, this probably isn't the place for you to be. Just putting that out there. So here's what's going on. I have these two poop. <laughs> two poop. I have these two pool pots right here that have these triple trunk adenidia palms and there's one right here and then another one over here. They're framing the steps that go into the pool. Typically every year what I've been doing is putting Supertunia Vista bubblegum in these with some, uh, I, what are they, the, I think it's the lime marguerite sweet potato vines and I decided I don't really want to do that this year. The sweet potato vines, they just get so bushy and unruly. It's neat, it's a pretty contrast, and I like the way it looks. Oh, and I also usually alternate pink and orange sun and patience for more of a full bushy effect up top. I wanna go a different direction this year. I was thinking maybe doing just petunias without the sweet potato vines. The problem is it's just, there's so there's just too many to choose from. And the other thing was instead of doing the Supertunia Vista bubble gum, I was going to go with the Supertunia Vista Paradise. I was only able to get my hands on two of them, so I won't be able to do what I usually usually do where I have three, where there would be like one here, one here, and then one on the other side, which means I probably need to alternate color, which isn't a big deal. That's fun to do. I also really want to work in these Supertunia Vista Silverberries. Now, these are kind of extra pinkish right now. You might be able to see that if I come up a little bit higher for you. That's just because we've had some pretty cool temperatures. Things are finally starting to warm up, but the cool temps do kind of influence color and size of flowers on things like petunias and hibiscus and some other plants. So they are typically a little bit more white than these are with some kind of pink veining inside of them. The reason I want to work those into these pots is because light colors reflect light. So in the evening, when the pool lights are on, that will have some reflection and kind of illuminate and look really nice. And uh, it's better than just going with pure white because with the trying to do like the tropical vibe thing, white is a little bit harder to work with and make things go together. But that's kind of the same thing here for the Supertunia Silverberry, but I think it's a little bit better than just pure white. So I know for sure I want to use those two. So there's the background and still this is this is what's been going on in my head for a few weeks. You can kind of see how I sort of mocked things up over on this side just so I can sort of see the contrast and the Supertunia honey I have very mixed feelings about. Yes I need to put that jack-o-lantern planter away. The flower coloration on the Supertunia honey varies a lot. Again I'll come in up higher and a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. See these are more of an orangey pink color whereas the ones that I just showed you before more of a yellow color. It's influenced by temperature and light and probably nutrients as well. They were to stay having this kind of color to them you can see they're fading and damaged but if they were to maintain that I would be all over it but I don't think they will. And it's not that I dislike the yellow, but it's just kind of fall-like. So maybe not a direction I want to go. So, so far, the only thing I've talked myself out of are the honeys. But without them, I think that th this would just be way too formal. And then I'm still torn on whether or not to use the sun patients in here. Because they get really big and bushy and I like them a lot. But sometimes they're like a bit much just because they end up coming up so high which could be controlled I could keep them pruned back like once a month give them a cut and that would pretty much take care of that but they get like 20 to 24 inches and that's the compact ones which is what these are that's pretty big and I like the way it looks but I also don't want to hide the trunks on this beautiful Edenidia palm I don't want to cover that up too much and then the Cordelin fruticasa these tea plants this is the variety uh kiwi very pretty plant I want to make sure to hold on to that tropical vibe a little bit of like a Polynesian flair if possible do you get it we're here now right still talking about it it's been like a week and I'm like I don't know what to do so I think what I'm gonna do here is keep mocking it up but just sort of playing around with different colors until I find something I like you see what would make the most sense would be to get a silverberry inside of each one of these corners I want to make sure that they're placed where they will be towards the pool so that the light does catch them I can do a super tunia vista paradise on each one it's just the issue is I don't really like this color combination. Only one of my paradise, Super Tunia Vista Paradise, have any flowers on them, so it's kind of hard to give an example. But I mean, I like that. It just kind of, it just, it has a like a Valentine's Day-ish sort of vibe to it, and I don't, I'm not really sure if I'm here for that. Uh, it's a new day. It started raining out of nowhere and just kept on raining and flooded the pool with dirt. There was soil flushing from all different directions. This thing looked like a milkshake yesterday. But 
it's now beautiful again, at least for a few hours, that now I can go ahead and finish this up. Uh, there is some background noise. The neighbors are getting new siding. There's like new streets being paved and there's just construction going on everywhere. I'm going to try and just work through it. Hopefully it's not too bad, although it did just get the loudest it's been all day as soon as I hit record. Go figure. What I've done here with these Adenidia palms is I actually went through and digged out a decent amount of soil. I mean, well, not that much, maybe a couple inches. The reason I did that is because I initially had these potted up with Cocoa Bop, which is a fantastic soil. I really like it, but the only issue that I had with it was that it dries way, way, way too fast for my liking, especially during the winter time. It was kind of hard to keep these plants hydrated. So I went ahead and just removed some of that and then I put 50% of it into my garden and then I retained 50% of that, mixed it up with some compost, some continuous release fertilizer and some palm fertilizer. I'm going to be putting a lot of annuals in here and uh, they are nutrient hogs. There needs to be enough nutrient in the soil blend for the palm tree and all of the annuals. And the root mass on this Adenidia palm is actually a lot bigger than I expected it to be. So I'm going to have to be kind of creative about how I make this happen, but I can pull it off. Because of all the background sounds, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just start tossing the annuals in here and pop back in when that's done. <sighs> okay, now keep in mind, these are going to need a few days to adjust, but not too bad. Very full, but that's okay. I'll explain why. This planter right here, I just finished this one. And this one right here, I did a few days ago when I started this video. It started to drizzle and I just went ahead and tossed it together really fast because I knew it was supposed to rain for a few days. So you can see in just a few days what a difference it makes. All the plants in here have already started to flush back out and look pretty good. Whereas the other one, it's going to take a couple days. Though I suppose a few weeks is really what's more typical with a planter like this. I decided to have my cake and eat it too. This was part of the original plan aside from just using the Super Tunia Vista Paradise, which like I explained wasn't able to really get the right quantity to make that work. I like this better. It's going to be extremely full and extremely colorful quickly because I'm not just using three petunias. I'm not going to have to wait a long time for this to look good. Although, I mean, to me, this already is looking pretty darn good. I know it's going to bother some people that there are so many plants in here, but here's the thing. They're annuals and it's not that big a deal. Did you like that thorough explanation? No. Well, what I mean is that since they're annuals, their space, their confinement is going to be temporary anyways, and uh, I can prune and do whatever's necessary. Midsummer, they're all going to get a cut back anyways, just to keep them nice, full, and bushy. And it's mostly the Supertunia vistas that are the ones that are going to be really aggressive as far as their growth. I mean, all petunias are pretty strong growers, but the Supertunia vista silverberry, which is this one right here, has that whitish almost pastelish pink flower on it with the pink veining and pink throats. That is a very strong grower. So I made sure that those are on opposite ends of the pots. I made sure to go ahead and put those right next to Supertunia Vista Paradise. Yeah, I wasn't so sure about that color combination with those, but since I decided to use pretty much every color <laughs> that I could as far as petunias go, and there's no orange or green or red, but the Paradise is pretty close. It's in the reddish hue. It's sort of a fuchsia color. Anyways, I figured that since I'm using all these other colors, that didn't really matter. So having the two vistas next to each other leaves the gaps open a little bit more on the other sides for the petunias that aren't going to grow probably as aggressively. So there's a supertunia honey right here. The flower color on that varies a lot. And then there's a purple wave petunia right here, which smells fantastic. It's a better look at the supertunia honey. I think that part of the color variation has to do with the age of the flower and probably temperature. I'm guessing the flowers may be more of a yellowy color during the heat of the summer. And then with the cooler nights, maybe get those pink colors. I can't remember. I've grown them before, but I don't really remember how that worked out. But I think it's mostly age related that they start off more yellow and kind of fade with that pinkish orange outline on them, which I like because it reminds me sort of of a sunset and it's as long as it's not like too intense with the yellows and the oranges in these pots, which there there is plenty of orange in there, but as long as that's not overwhelming, then it's not going to remind me too much of fall, which was what my hangup was, is that I don't want to be thinking about fall during summertime. And behind the petunias, I alternated some sun and patience. The spacing on them wasn't perfect because there were some spots where the roots were just kind of extreme from the palm tree and I couldn't quite get it exactly how I wanted to, that will be just fine. When doing something like this with things that spread and crawl, those tend to blend together and there will hopefully be more of an array of color. The same should be true for the sun and patience up there. I've done this with the sun and patience around the pool and these palm tree pots many times and that's never been a problem. They always end up blending together and looking just fine. Though sometimes getting a little bit too big, but again that can be remedied by giving them their midsummer cutback. And then finally, 
In the very back, right up against those palm trunks, are Cordelin fredicasas. These are the tea plants. The variety is called kiwi. They have beautiful green and almost a lightish lime green or yellow variegation on them with that outstanding pink outline on the foliage. The kiwi stays smaller. They have more of a pointed leaf on them. I think that they ultimately are what really round these planters out the most. Kind of wanted to have sort of like a Polynesian vibe to everything and those really, no matter where you put them, you get them in the ground or in a pot with a lot of color on them or a lot of texture. They just light everything up. They're beautiful plants. As if you watched last week's vlog, you can see I did something kind of similar over here and I wanted to make sure that that carried through. The pinks, the oranges, the greens and purples and than the cordelins in the back, those fredicasas, the tea plants. So this is sort of an exaggeration on all of that. And I like it. It's a lot, but that's okay. But like I said, they're annuals. They'll fill in together just fine and they'll have a midsummer cutback anyways. When I put planters together, I do like to consider how they look from all different directions. So I made sure to stand all the way back over by my table and even went inside and stood in the window and made sure to have a look there. And I stood down here by the banana trees, made sure that that looked good and everything checked out. The main thing was knowing what I wanted to be the stars of the planters, which are the cordelins, of course the palm tree, and then the silverberry for the light reflection, everything else to complement, contrast, and make things bright, beautiful, and colorful. Have a nice little almost a rainbow going on in here. This is about as close as I could get, at least with what I had to work with, that is. I'm enjoying them. I like how they turned out. More than enough color, very full. These things, they'll all blend together and work together just fine. Like I said, it's a little bit tight. Spacing's a little bit off, but that doesn't really matter with plants that will grow together and blend together like the petunias. They'll be okay. Really the tea plants that are in here that I had to be the most focused on their spacing, making sure that each one of those was centered in with the trunks of the palms in between each of them. Everything else in here, grow together and be very vibrant and colorful. Yeah, that's gonna do it. I apologize for the noise and the chaos. I didn't intend for this to be more of a vlog. Didn't really work out because of the weather. I couldn't really keep filming while I was doing things, but that's okay. I had a good time. Hey, I hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to y'all. Don't forget the whole YouTube thing. Helps the channel a lot and I do appreciate it. I'll wrap this up before those saws start going again. It is so noisy out here. Anyways, as always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye-bye.